Talk about a moose interrupted, eh? <laughs> Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for episode 11 of Supernatural Season 5, Sam Interrupted. This is the mid-season return. While it isn't a heavy story-based episode, considering the events of Abandon All Hope, it's actually a really well-written thriller episode, funnily enough, written by Dab and Laughlin. Of all the episodes that they've done so far through this season, including season 4, I almost say this is the best one that they ever did, because this was actually... The first scary episode that they've done in a while. And it's because it's a thriller. It's like all of a mind trick kind of episode. It's actually pretty well written. This episode is kind of similar to Folsom Blues, where there is an old hunter friend of theirs who called the brothers up about uh, strange and mysterious suicides happening at a mental hospital, which happens to be Riverview Hospital. I'm kind of curious as how they were able to do this because Riverview Hospital has very strict stipulations in terms of when it comes to filming any sort of mental hospital sort of scenes at Riverview because it used to be a mental hospital and not a very good one at least back in like the 60s and 70s they are very strict in terms of how they portray it it only goes to a certain way in this episode in this episode they're after a wraith which I really thought was the same thing that was some in something wicked all the way back in season one but it's not it's a different little creature but what it's doing is it's driving everyone in the insane asylum insane but how it goes about it it actually tricks you having watched this episode several times in the past i was still thrown for a loop i have to commend the writing for that the brothers come into the hospital and they meet with their old hunter friend who's a little bit loopy but they slowly start to kind of figure out what's going on or at least see that there is something unnatural about what's going on probably the funniest bit about this whole episode is that they full on admit what they do and they full on admit what's going on without any kind of holdback. And I thought that was actually really funny. Yeah, I unleashed the devil. Yeah, I'm supposed to be Michael. Yeah, we're supposed to have a battle for the apocalypse. Dean meets with this doc who starts to talk to him and she's kind of on his side. She's like his psychiatrist. And this relationship is key because the whole time I'm thinking there's something off about her, but I don't know what it is. And then as the episode progresses, it turns out that this person is a spectral. She's not even real. It's all in Dean's head. And when we think that Dean is the only one who's being affected, Sam is just having some violent outbursts because he thought that the main counselor was the Wraith at first. He attacks him and turns out nothing happens. He in turn is also being affected by this wraith. It just gets more and more thriller-like. It gets more and more of a kind of like a mind trick sort of episode. Something like Jacob's Ladder. It's not written on the same scale. It's a supernatural episode. It's only 40 minutes long, but you have to give credit where credit is due in terms of this. If there's any sort of negative, it's possibly the fact that the wraith keeps changing. At first, it's not the counselor, then it is the counselor, then it's the girl going around kissing people, which that's probably the one thing in this episode that's like, all right, that doesn't make any sense. That, 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 that shouldn't be here at all. Of this hot woman going around making out with people it's like yeah, yeah, yeah okay that, that, that should have been it if there's any major negative aside from a kind of a cursory conversation about what happened with joe and ellen it's this girl she is the giant red flag that shouldn't be in this episode they had to try and throw some sort of humor that the show's used to but i would say this is the only negative bit about the entire thriller aspect of the episode. But despite that, I still ain't gonna knock it down as far as I think it would because I really like how this episode's put together. I love the struggle that Dean goes through, especially when he starts to break down the close-up camera work, when he's standing by the window, or when he goes to talk to uh, the crazy hunter when he himself is going cuckoo. I think this is probably one of the better, hey, who done it? Hey, what is it? Kind of episodes of the show. Maybe re-watching it again immediately afterwards, I would not have as much of a kind of a, you know, a grandiose experience, but that's kind of what happens when you're trying to figure out who it is in these kind of who done it sort of situations. But considering it's been about 8 years since I've watched this episode, it was still pretty fresh for me to re-watch it again, and that's something I always can enjoy. Thank God I don't have a memory that I can just remember everything about every episode. That's what I enjoyed about it, just that new mystery, that new thrill. So in the end, Sam Interrupted for me is actually probably one of the best one-off episodes in terms of Monster of the Week kind of episodes. It's smart, 
It's got good thriller bits. It's got a good humor where it needs to be. And it's got a good twist. So in the end, I'm going to give Sam Interrupted a 6 out of 7. I'm, I'm serious. It's It just, it just gets over the 5. But I can't not commend how well this episode was put together. And I gotta give Dab and Laughlin the credit. This was a really well-written episode. But that's what I thought. Let's see what you guys had to say about this episode. Sam Interrupted to me has the same storyline as Folsom Prison Blues in season two. I do love how Sam and Dean convinced a psychiatrist of being mentally insane because they told him the truth about everything that was going they were going through. I also love how the episode delves especially internally into what Sam and Dean are going through in this season, from Sam's uncontrollable rage to, Dean, to Dean's hopelessness. Sure, it's a Monster of the Week episode, but this is what would become a common storyline trope for Supernatural, while Sam and Dean are dealing with bigger threats and then focusing on other plots uh, with them hunting other monsters. I do like how we get to see Martin later on in season eight, at least. This is, without it, out my second least favorite episode of the season. Not a bad episode by any means, but it's just not great either. Now, I, I don't know, I, actually, I have to say I really enjoyed it. I was really surprised by it. I do admit I, I understand the comparisons to Folsom Prison Blues, there is a lot of that. And yeah, I do find it quite funny how they just full on tell the truth. Sam Interrupted surprised me when it aired back in 2010. I wasn't expecting a standalone filler episode coming back from the break, and usually at a time I try to avoid these. But I actually really enjoy this one. I have watched it several times over the years, and for some reason it's always been a favorite one-off episode of mine. It's also aged well for me. The humor lands for most parts, but what is really engaging is seeing this hunt to find the monster that is complicated by everyone slowing their grip, slowly losing their grip on reality and being less and less able to rely on their own senses for clues. And all the while, the brothers are processing the recent failure, trauma, and helplessness to fix their situations. Yes, 100%. That is exactly why I like this episode. Between Dean's struggle to get up in the morning in the beginning stages of depression, downward spiral, and Sam's rage, we actually are able to relate to them on a more personal level, something that was lost in later seasons. There's also great design for the monster's true face, cool concept of only seeing it in mirrors. Martin, after they douche his character up in season 8, he's so likable yet pitiable at the same time. Time, a sad reflection of how some uh, hunters turn out. I do not remember that this guy ended up in season eight. I am, I'm, I'm going to be very interested when he reappears. Some people compare it to season two's Folsom Prison Blues, literally just before. I personally think this is a better episode, 100%. I give it a six out of seven, and I think you'll probably give it a five out of seven. Sorry for the essay, but I love this one. Hey, you're actually, you are 100% right with, um, well, your score is my score. So, yeah, no, I was actually quite uh, surprised with this one. This is a pretty standard Monster of the Week filler episode. The boys are trying to help a former hunter, Martin, to take down a brain-sucking monster that terrorizes a hospital. I love that, how Dean and Sam got into the hospital telling the absolute truth about their lives and then later facing their own demons because the monster drugged them disguised as a nurse. My favorite thing in this episode was when Sam was high on meds. So funny. My issue with this episode is that it ends too abruptly with the boys jumping into Apollo while they're still in their bathrobes. Did they leave their clothes behind along with perfectly good fake IDs? And what happened to poor Martin? We never find out what happened to this character at all after he helped. Uh, actually, apparently, well, everyone keeps saying he appears in season eight, so I think that's probably in the comment here. Oh, they, oh, he's gonna get killed. <laughs> Shit. An alpine situation, you would make a great young Bobby Singer. Got round, got his round face and beard. Well, thank you. Maybe audition for that role in the prequel? No. Not a chance. I can't act to save my life. You guys should see that by now. My face is, like, unemotive. Is it just me, or does this episode feel like an episode from season two? And for the most part, I like it. Basically, the episode involves the boys helping out an old friend in an insane asylum. They find that several patients have died. They soon discover that a wraith is responsible for the deaths. They start questioning their own sanity and are forced to confront other deep-seated issues. Sam Interrupted is just an episode out of context in season five, but I like it a lot. The situation with Sam and Dean facing their own demons was done really well. The only issue I have is that the episode has bad attempts at humor. Five out of seven. I don't know. I didn't find the the humor that bad to be honest i thought it was pretty decent it's a it's a good mix of humor and darkness it's something that dab and laughlin could do but sometimes they just weren't given enough time on it but i feel the runtime was good for this one hey jeremy or since you're re-watching the seasons do you think you'll maybe do a second round of the reviews of the seasons you did the first time they aired to see if any of the opinions have changed season 10 season 11 well yeah no season 10 like i'm gonna be reviewing every episode of that one 
I might do a season 11 re-re-review. I'm not going to review every single episode again. I'm not I'm not doing that. That that's going to look like a bit much because it's going to make the entire process look so ridiculous. But yeah, no, I I do plan to rewatch season 11 again once I get there. Very good filler episode. We needed a filler after Abandon All Hope. It makes me laugh when they check into the mental institution and just talk about the last few seasons of the Doctor and then Drugged Up Sam was funny too. Very well done episode. I love that even though the Doctor is an hallucination when she says to Dean to feel like uh, if, uh, six billion humans' lives depend on you, how do you get up in the morning? The monster is awesome too. Perfect place to feed in a mental hospital, 100%. Now, I like that line too. It's really good delve into our characters, and, and it's a very personal episode for these guys. Sam Interrupted is a good episode, but not a great one. I really enjoy seeing John Greers as a hunter in this episode, but to me, he will always be brutes from the TV series The Pretender. Oh wow, my dad watched The Pretender a long time ago. Sam and Dean are really forced to confront their issues when they're in the asylum. The Doctor is so right about the boys' codependency of each other, plus it isn't until this episode that Sam realizes that he has uncontrollable rage inside of him, and then there's Dean he, who's forced to confront his guilt over Ellen and Joe's death, but also has doubts of, as a hunter and is slowly feeling hopeless. I did enjoy him flash the nurse saying pudding. And also the woman who plays Dean's imaginary doctor is played by Michelle Harris, who plays Barry Allen's mom on the show The Flash. Oh, that's interesting. I, I haven't watched The Flash admittedly, but no, I didn't know that. There's, again, there's a lot of Vancouver actors that we all like. They all hop between different shows. It's pretty it's pretty crazy. Decent episode. We need a break from the after the emotionally exhausting Abandon All Hope. I don't know if this was the best route to go, but I liked it. And to answer your question about Rachel Miner, yes, Jeremy Carver wanted to continue the story Sarah Gamble established in her era, and you can see it in the dialogue between Meg and Castiel in her final episode. Unfortunately, this was the year that she was diagnosed with with MS, and uh, she had, and they had to kill her off so she could start treatments. To me, this was the end of that character. It wasn't Meg who came back in season 15. I also seen many comments in the previous episode talking about Mark Shepard and how he was treated unfairly. Don't feel sorry for him. Immediately after his firing, Jeremy Carver gave him a job in Doom Patrol. And he's hilarious as ever. You should watch Doom Patrol. I, I've heard that Doom Patrol is very good. I, I feel bad for Mark because he he had at least a decent out. The out was going to happen, but he had a good line. He had a good end. Like He had a whole charity thing. Like Even when I lose, I win thing going and like they had the shirts made and everything and just despite him dab cut that ending out so I, I would be pretty pissed for him too okay guys thank you for your comments and now the next episode is swap me now admittedly i think i remember this episode i also think that there's a really good bob seeger song in this episode for some reason that's just that's just queuing in for me. I, I'm not entirely certain, but I think there is going to be. So give me you guys' comments about that episode, and I'll read those off in the next review. Otherwise, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say The Click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.